babies. <laughs> Hi. We'll get you food tomorrow, okay? <laughs> Welcome to Hub City Homestead. My name is Ruth. Join me and our family as we raise our chickens, grow our garden, and try out all the things that make a homestead. We live on a small property, so we're going to do homesteading small. <laughs> Welcome to Hub City Homestead. Today, we're going to talk about a couple things. We're going to talk about the cost of raising 75 broilers and how much money you could bring home. Uh, we're also going to, winter. part of winterizing chicken coops is making sure that they have some place to take a dust bath. So we're going to put together some dust baths today. We'll show you a little video of the chicks because they're just getting so big and they're so cute. And we've had a little bit of warm weather lately and so we've been able to bring them outside and they've enjoyed the warm weather. So. What we're going to do is we are going to take the kitty litter bucket. And we are going to take the kitty litter bucket and we're going to put sand in here. Not cat litter sand, just playground, play sand. Uh, and we will put each of these bins in each of our chicken runs. Or underneath, actually we'll put them under the chicken coops so that we can uh, make a dust bath for the chickens for the winter. If they're underneath the chicken coop, then they'll stay dry all winter long. This is just quick create premium play sand. So you can see it's relatively fine. It's not going to have great big rocks in it. It's plenty dusty. So they will definitely enjoy playing in this. It is 50 pounds. So it's kind of a heavy bag. Okay, we put about half this bag in there. That's 25 pounds of sand. Oh, move that around. That feels so good. All right, guys. You guys ready for a really good dust bath? So as you can see, first of all, this run doesn't get a lot of sun. It's getting a little bit right now. And it's really wet. We're going to put it underneath their coop. So we'll take this, we're going to take this and we're going to just slide it in, slide it in about a foot. That's good, that'll be good. What do you think, Chewy? We got my favorite neighbor, Kyler. He's my chicken babysitter. Hey, you can just slide that, let's slide it right under here. We're going to slide it. You don't have to do it too far, but just right there. Yep, that's perfect. And that way these chickens can have that bath because they don't have any shelter anywhere else. So they do have a bath spot over here. Are you guys bathing? Is that your bath spot? Oh my goodness. Did you see how much dust came out of them? <laughs> Can, huh? So, we, as we take breaks in the winter time, we start thinking about the next year. We start thinking about the next year and the things that we want to do. And this year has really been a, a growing year for me and for our family. And we find it really interesting because we, we moved down here from the city. And we had interest in being prepared and having food storage, but 
we couldn't have much of a garden where we were it was just just wasn't a lot of space and and it was very difficult to do and I couldn't get myself up to do it <laughs> so when we moved out rural we we have had stronger and stronger feelings of being more prepared and of uh, doing things to provide our own food for our own family uh, kind of started when our neighbors gave us their chickens <laughs> And as I've researched chickens and we've uh, worked with chickens and even harvested and processed chickens, we've found that it, it's a, a very fulfilling and a wonderful uh, and a wonderful way to provide food for the family while loving on these wonderful little animals. So what I want to go through is we are going to plan on harvesting Cornish Cross this coming year. And oftentimes when people consider this option of doing uh, broiler chickens for meat, they're like, how much is that going to cost me and is it going to be worth it? Um, the great thing about a Cornish cross is that they are ready to harvest in, se harvest in seven to eight weeks. And they're not a very expensive bird to buy. In this video, what I'm hoping to do is be able to give you those numbers uh, on processing Cornish Cross chickens, uh, what we're planning on doing, and what we hope our outcome is going to be. So I'm going to do this video now, and then in the springtime when we harvest our first batch of Cornish Cross chickens, I will post up our numbers to see if they match up with what my estimates are going to be. Uh, so. Here we go. Hopefully this will give you some information and help you decide if doing processing Cornish Cross uh, broiler chickens is going to be something that you want to do for you and your family. My goal this year is to try and harvest broilers at least three times. And out of those three times, for each of those three times, maybe four times, I want to be processing 75 birds. So I've looked at lots of different hatcheries and looked at the price of Cornish Cross uh, straight run birds. And the best price I've been able to find is at Meyer Hatchery for $2.10 if you purchase 50 or more. Uh, it gets even cheaper if you purchase 100 or more. But because I'm just doing 75, that's where we're going to start with our, our estimates. So, if we purchase 75 broilers at $2.10 a piece, we end up spending $157.50 on the chickens, on the chicks. And then, we go into feeding costs. Now, these feeding costs, I've estimated from uh, some information that um, was given to me uh, through a group that I'm a part of from the University of Kentucky Coll College of Agriculture, Food, and Environment. And they have an article there that says, How much will my chickens eat? And I will link this down below. And they have... Uh, they have different feeding schedules for egg layers and for meat birds and for broilers, so like your Cornish Cross uh, fast-growing broilers. And based upon this list, uh, it's going to cost about, uh, well, it'll be about 18 pounds of food per bird for the entire for the entire uh, eight weeks that they're uh, growing and that we're feeding them. So if we do 18 pounds per broiler, uh, so we're going to do that times the 75, just in case we don't have any loss. Okay, that equals 1,350 pounds of chicken food that we need over the eight weeks for these birds. Now at my local feed store, I can get uh, I can get feed for the broilers for about anywhere from $14 to $17 a bag. I just put $15 on here. So this estimate might be, it could be low, it could be a little high. 
uh, I just try to stay kind of in the, the middle. Now, if you are lucky enough to be someplace where you can get bulk feed for a lower cost, or you have a feed store that sells it for less than this, uh, then you're in, you're in great shape. So, so we took that 1,350 pounds, divided it by 50 pounds a bag, and we ended up with, I believe, 27 bags. And then you multiply that by $15, and it ends up costing about $405 to buy feed for these 75 birds for eight weeks. So at this point, that means our costs are at $562.50 for raising these chickens. This also takes into account that you already have a coop that you're going to be raising them in and a brooder that you're going to be raising in, them in because those kinds of costs are a one-time cost that uh, you build it and it costs a little bit of money up front but then you have it for, for a long time to be able to raise these birds and do what you need to do uh, to um, raise and, and harvest broilers. So if we go with the 10% loss and we lose about eight birds, that brings us to harvest time. And at harvest time, we'll end up with about 67 birds. And out of those 67 birds, 30 of them are going to our family, We've just, I've decided. And so if we count those 30, 30 uh, broilers, at five dollars a pound and they average about five pounds a piece oftentimes it's more than that uh, this last summer we did seven broilers and our smallest one was five and a half pounds and our biggest one was eight pounds so this is just kind of a low average but if you take that 30 and you multiply it times five as an average of five pounds per bird at five dollars a pound we come up with $750 worth of meat for our family out of those 30 birds that we only paid $562.50 for. Now seven of those birds will give away to those who help us do the harvesting. And that leaves us with 30 birds that we can sell at $5 a pound. So there we are again, 30 birds at five pounds average times $5 per pound. We're looking at another $750 uh, over the top of everything that we've spent. Now if you subtract what we spent out of that money, we still come out ahead at $187.50 plus the $750 worth of food that we have in our freezer. So is it profitable? I think if you're doing large amounts of birds, it is. I think it can be something you can do to definitely provide for your family, to be able to sell um, good meat to people interested in meat that doesn't come from a factory where the birds are crammed into teeny cages and uh, according to Joel Salatin, uh, there's always one dead at the bottom of the cage, which I think is absolutely absolutely disgusting so I try not to think about it right now because right now I'm buying chicken and I uh, from the store and I don't want to do that anymore so that's why we're working on this this uh, enterprise um, but it really is a matter of what what is the true worth to you and your family to know where your food comes from and also if you can uh, uh, if you feel that it's that you have the space and the time to take care of the birds now if you do not have the space and you do not have the time you know it's great to look at other homesteaders and and talk to them about you know have you done broilers do you have some space that maybe we could set up a broiler uh, coop and raise some broilers uh, to, to harvest and we'll come and help you harvest them and we'll help you pay for the food and we can split the cost on all of that. Uh, it's worth it to do that. In fact, you know, I, I, I show 30 birds for our family. It's technically not for our family. We are, are looking at doing kind of a co-op with another family 
here in our in our area that they're looking to raise a cow for meat so what we're kind of hoping to do is is a, a type of exchange where we get some of their uh, beef and we give we get them chicken and we do some kind of an exchange we haven't worked out all the details to worry about it they'll come over and help us harvest and they'll get some of the birds and when they harvest their beef if they do all the processing themselves then we will help them to do the processing and we will get some of that meat so don't if this is not something you feel you can do in the space that you have go find somebody who has a little space and and talk to them about it and find out if it is something you can do this next year when we do this like i said i'll put up the numbers for what actually happened with our meat and our chickens and also i will uh we will do a video on processing and how we do the processing and you can see all the mistakes we make and all the good things that we did and see if it is something that you want to do uh, that video will come out probably towards the end of may is is the plan to uh to uh, harvest in may from some birds that we get in march so, so this is information that I found very uh, uh, informative for myself to help me understand the whole process of raising broilers and selling them and I hope that it helps you as well as you make decisions about whether it's something you're going to do or not. Uh, I, uh, am, I am loving my chickens. Uh, we have processed some of our own birds that we have named. It's sometimes hard, sometimes it's not just kind of depends on the bird but we are loving our chickens and we love the idea of raising our own food and having that available and, and being able to opt out of buying some of this stuff from the grocery store being able to um, uh, to process this meat get it in the freezer bottle some of it I have a I have a friend that she she will go when they have chicken on sale at the grocery store and then she bottles it and she uses it for stew meat and different things so that's something we will be going into this next year as we process uh, the birds and we work on preservation how we're going to preserve our harvest and uh, we'll go through that as well because it's something I want to learn and she's going to come over and she's going to teach me and and I'm thrilled about that so, thank you for joining us. I hope that you got some good information from this video. And uh, I wish you all the best on your processing adventures with chickens. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.